My name is Evie, and it's phonetically pronounced just like the Pokemon. Um, I think uh, a quintessential kernel I can give you about myself, I'm a very curious individual. That curiosity drives me into discovery after discovery after discovery and so forth. And I have found that, um, you know, curiosity really facilitates learning and it makes it fun for everyone involved. And no matter what subject that I teach, because um, I'm, I'm I started out as a painter and then became a performance artist and then a filmmaker and then like a game person and then, I don't know, I'm just curious about things. So no matter what I teach, the underpinnings of my motivations is always to ignite the student's curiosity. Who works in tech? Okay, so here is uh, the graph. We have on it, on the far left, the list of our typical classic tech companies. The dark color represents women in tech. The light colors rep represent men in tech. Next column over, whites in tech. Next column over, Asians in techs. And then we go to Latinos, then blacks, then multi, I don't know what. And then other, what could that be? I don't even know. Um, the joke is uh, the recursive loop that is cultural fit as we look at this image of who works in tech. And then uh, who are my students, okay? So I work at Thorogood Marshall Academic High School. It's a small school. There's about 441 students enrolled in ninth through 12th grade. Uh, I'm a CTE teacher. That means I work for the Career and Technical Education Department of San Francisco uh, Unified School District. That means I'm responsible for prepping kids for jobs in tech or pursuing jo uh, education in tech. So who are my students? So uh, we're about 50.6% uh, Latino, Latinx, 20% uh, Asian, 13.6% um, African American, 66.2% uh, socially, socially economically disadvantaged, 59.2% English learners. Sum it up, my kids are poor, poor kids of color uh, who are non-English speakers, um, who are immigrants from Latin America and China, okay? Um, so again, I, I teach esoteric game theory and computer science to non-English speakers. What? It is a trip. What do you mean there's no word for Spanish in functions? Isn't it functionar? Functional? Funciones? Come on, man, there's a word for this. So my students' hopes and fears are, they're, they're pretty comprised of creature comforts. Um, they want to make enough money to have a place to live and keep that place. They wanna have families and feed those families and keep those families together. They have dreams of being athletes and singers or nurses and bakers. I was like, really? You wanna be a baker? Okay. No, you still have to program something because you're in my class. <laughs> so, um, what are my teaching goals given the fact that uh, they are socially, economically disadvantaged? Um, we're living in a world where automation and robotics are taking the jobs that they think they're going to have because they have some 1950s views stuck in their head about the, what the workforce is and what they're supposed to do because the isms are internalized for us now, right? We don't need overt people out there telling us you can't do this because you're this, that, and the other thing. So what are my teaching goals? I'm here to ignite their curiosity. I am here to raise their awareness of all the technology around them, whether it's ubiquitous or innocuous, because they got no freaking clue. Um, I also hope to inspire some technological aspirations as well. Um, so how do I do this? I keep things simple and fun, okay? So if you teach the young ones, this looks like little bits. You're like, what is this doing in a high school classroom? It's simple, okay? I start out with simple code and simple things. Okay, I focus more on being able to understand the fundamentals of computer science, inputs, outputs, loops, logic, variables, and functions. Because 
if you know what a noun is, if you know what a pronoun is, if you know, um, if you know what a pronoun is, a verb, that, those sorts of things, then you can learn the sentence structure for any language that you want to speak, okay? That's my solution for trying to get, a, get out of this sort of tutorial uh, uh, stagnation of suddenly not being able to take what you've learned or what you've done, I should say, what you've done and reapply it to something else. Which is also baffling to me because something has happened with the generations because there was a time, like that's how I learned. I copied things. I'm more self-taught than, prof than professionally trained because look at me, I'm like my kids, okay? So, but I had the gumption to go out and find things. So I don't actually understand, um, I also study a lot of neuro neurological science. I don't understand what's happened to the learning minds of these generations, that they're not able to absorb a repetitive task and then extrapolate and synthesize it for something else later. That's something I'm currently re researching. So in the beginning, there was analog, okay? So we start out with board games, card games, cardboard arcade games, okay? I do this so that we can focus on those crazy, weird, slippery slope, esoteric concepts of game theory. How many times, I can't tell you how many times, like, what do you mean you don't know the difference between a rule and a game mechanic? There's a subtle nuance there, right? Or the fact when I ask the first day of class, what is a game, and I hear all this stuff, and in my head, like, they have no freaking clue. <laughs> because it's ubiquitous, it's taken for granted, it's like, it's like in our culture. It's, it been, it's been with all of us for ancient times, okay? It's like food. Games are like food. It's been around that long. Okay, so. We get into the simple cardboard stuff, analog stuff, and then we start to bridge. We use physical computing. I use physical computing as a way to begin to apply some of these simple computer science concepts, right? Um, and we use different gadgets. I am known to put curiosity, what I like to call curiosity traps and knowledge lures in my classroom. I, I wait. And it happens. I wait for, Miss Rage, what's that? How do you work with that? What's this for? Why do we have this? I catch them all. <laughs> I am that sneaky, subversive teacher. But the idea is we go in with these manipulatives and unplugged activities and um, paper computing. Um, and scratch and micro bits and then eventually we get to the Unity Playground which is a tool that Unity has developed that allows you to, to develop a game using very little code and all that time I am sneaking the code up on them. So that by the time that they get to C Sharp, it's not so scary. It's not so intimidating and hey, I know what a variable is and I can actually recognize it in text without like the really cute orange block that they have in Scratch. Yeah, so while I'm doing all of that, um, so there's three things that they say in neuro, neuro, neurological sciences that you need, the brain needs in order to develop self-motivation and self-discipline, okay? And that is um, immediate uh, positive feedback, okay? You're never too old for stickers. I have a TA from SF State uh, uh, who's a computer science major. He's, it's his fourth year. I have to fill out this sheet and comment on his uh, behavior and performance in class. And I put a sticker on his, and he's like, Miss, Miss Rage, you don't have to do that. And I was like, yes, you're never too old for a sticker. So anyway, immediate positive feedback, OK? Um, be able to track your productivity and also see your ranking amongst others, okay? We actually do need that for our brains in order to self-motivate and not have someone else yelling at us. My space is designed to reflect the spaces that I've seen in the tech industry 
the maker spaces and the programming spaces are laid out to reflect that so that the space feels like a studio. I call it a studio. I don't call it a classroom. I say clean up the studio. It's time to clean up the studio. And I hope that one day that they'll end up at a place like UC Santa Cruz or working for someplace cool like Unity, right? Those are the things I hold in my mind. My job is to expose them to all these spaces as well as fill their head with the content. All right, so I'll end with, I want them to be able to be creators of their own content, their own life, and their own destiny, okay? And what's important to me is that I'm there to witness the moment that they realize that they are the creators of these things, their content, their life, and their destiny. Boo.